Hello, Nintendo Wii here. Welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you my top 10 PlayStation 1 games. This video was actually a recommendation for someone on Patreon, so if you want to go and have a look at Patreon, check the link in the description. Just a bit of a heads up before I start this video properly, I will not be including Final Fantasy. I was going to include Final Fantasy 7, but something else just took the number 10 spot on the list. And no, I have not played Chrono Cross yet, so that's not going on the list either. Although I really, really want to get around to it at some point. So here we go, in at number 10, we have a very broken box, Tetris Plus. If you've ever played a Tetris game, this is a fantastic take on the franchise. Really, really interesting. It's sort of a mix between Tetris and Wario's Woods, if you've, if you've ever played that. It's amazing in multiplayer. I uh, did a sort of let's play with a friend back at uni and we played this for hours. It's really, really addictive. It's got great music, great graphics, and I just love the fact that you actually have to try and save the, uh, the little adventurer guy down there as he goes around these different levels. So you actually have to send him to the exit by playing Tetris. I'll put some video over this so you can get an idea of it, but if you like Tetris or puzzle games in, gen in general, definitely, definitely go and find Tetris Plus, you will not be disappointed. Number 9, we have a really, really interesting game, made by the same person who made Another World on the Mega Drive and the SNES and PC. This is Heart of Darkness, a really, really cool game, really amazing graphics, it's all like sort of hand-drawn, 3D, pre-rendered, sort of... Um, it's sort of an animated adventure that you actually play. You can see some screenshots on the back there. Really, really interesting game. It plays very well. It is extremely difficult though, so do not be surprised if it takes you a while to get through it. But it's definitely worth it. If you get the uh, game in a good condition, it actually comes with some red and blue 3D glasses for some certain scenes within the game. So, really, really interesting game for the PS1 there. Number 8. If you like Zelda, if you like me and you like Nintendo games, I don't know, this really feels like that. This is Alundra for the PlayStation 1. There was a sequel, Alundra 2, but that's a lot more 3D. This one is completely 2D sprites. It looks amazing. It plays fantastic. If you like Zelda, definitely have a look at Alundra. It's got a very interesting story. You sort of go into people's dreams and sort of help them out with their problems, their nightmares plays really well. It's another game that's quite difficult as well, so you'll definitely get a lot of playtime out of Alundra. Really, really great game. Next up, um, a game I'm sure a lot of people really love from their childhood, Medieval. There is a sequel, Medieval 2, but I decided to include the first one here because I've got so many great memories of this and I actually played it again recently. Really, really fun. Definitely one of the more unique third-person platformers for the system as well. There's quite a lot of them, so I definitely recommend Medieval. There was also a game for the PSP that was released, but I haven't actually played that, so I don't know how it compares, but can definitely recommend this. And I'm pretty sure it's on the Vita and PS4, so if you have uh, one of them systems, you can download it and play it on there. Now, an all-time classic. This isn't a PS1 exclusive, it was actually first released on the Atari Jaguar, of all systems. This is Rayman, the original Rayman, not Rayman 2. I really, really love the first Rayman. For one thing, the graphics are incredible, the gameplay, the level design, the different power-ups that you get, the different abilities that you unlock as you play, the boss fights, everything about this game is fantastic. Also really good is the GBA remake, or sort of the port of the game, so if you've got a PS1, or an Atari Jaguar, or a Sega Saturn, definitely get Rayman. Now, I've got the Japanese version of this game. If you know me, you know I love Mega Man. Here it is, Mega Man 8. Another game with amazing 2D graphics. I know the PS1 was sort of known for its 3D games, but there was some amazing 2D output on the system as well. This is another game that was also released on the Sega Saturn, but I've got the PS1 version here. Apparently it's slightly better, got slightly better transparency on some of the water effects or something, but really, really fun game. I was really, really excited to play it. I only picked it up in Japan last year, so I haven't really played it that much, but I'm hoping to play a lot more of it soon. Really recommend it, and it's also on Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 on the PS4 or Xbox One if you've got one of them systems. And just before I put this game down, it's also known for its incredibly, hilariously bad cutscenes. Just watch this. Now, you guys all knew it was coming. It's just been re-released on the PS4. 
Crash Bandicoot. I decided to pick Crash Bandicoot 2 here because it's slightly more interesting than the first one. It's got more sort of variety in the levels, and I like the fact that you start in a sort of hub world where you can sort of choose which level to go to. You don't have to play through them all in one go. So, Crash Bandicoot 2, and its subtitle is Cortex Strikes Back. Really great game. All three of the Crash Bandicoot games are great, but if you have to pick one, I'd go with this one. The third one sort of has too many weird levels in cars and motorbikes, and I like it. This is straight up platforming action, and it's great. Now, before you ask, I do not have Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Not on the PS1, at least. I have that on the PSP. So, my pick is Castlevania Chronicles. I was really, really surprised when I picked this game up because I didn't even know that it existed. It's actually a remake of the original, not the original on the NES, the original on the, I think, PC-88, possibly? I'm not sure. Or Sharp X-68000, something like that, anyway. Castlevania Chronicles, fantastic remake. The music in this game, for one thing, is incredible. If you prefer the Metroidvania style of Castlevania games, this might not be for you, but if you like the NES or the SNES games, if you've just picked up a SNES Mini and you've played Castlevania 4, for example, this one's fantastic. I don't know if it's been re-released, but it's not that expensive, and if you just want a bit of a change of pace from the slower-paced Castlevania Symphony of the Night, definitely go and check this one out. It's a great game. Two more now, and we're really getting to the good stuff. This is my number two pick. I really struggled whether it was this or the next one, but here it is. Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle. Absolutely incredible platformer. Honestly, there's a, there's a remake of it on the Wii, but I actually prefer the PlayStation 1 original. It's really unique. It looks like Mario, but it doesn't play anything like it. I'm sure you've heard me talk about Klonoa before if you've watched the channel. You have this sort of ring that you can use to pick enemies up and use them as platforms, use them as projectiles. There's loads of puzzles. It's a very puzzle-based game. It's a 2.5D game, so the camera actually spins around the levels. Really, really great game. Really cute graphics, amazing art style. And the sequel on the PS2 is amazing as well, so if you've got PS1, definitely recommend Klonoa. And my favourite game on the PS1, and one of my favourite games of all time, Spyro 2. What a game. I love 3D platformers. After playing Mario 64, just that was my favourite genre for a long time. That, Banjo Kazooie, and Spyro 2. Right up there with the best of the best. The thing I love about this game is the collectibles. There's so many different things to collect. There's different challenges and all the levels. They're all really unique. There's loads of different upgrades, the music's great, the graphics are great, everything about this game is fantastic. I do also really, really love the third game, but unfortunately I encountered a glitch that means I could only get 99.9% .9 completion. So, my cream of the crop, my number one pick on the PS1, Spyro 2. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, comment, check me out on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye!